Hello. Um, so yeah, I'm doing another quick update on what's going on with all this GP stuff. Um, I've done, what, two, three videos about it now. Um, so yeah, today, with the help of John, um, he rang the Care Quality Commission, I think they're called. Um, he rang them, spoke to them, logged a complaint with them, uh, spoke to them about what was going on. Uh, they gave him a bit more information. They said they're going to look into it. Uh, and they've got the case open and whatnot. So all we got to do, if we need to add to it, we can ring them and quote our little reference number and they'll add it to the case. Um, but yeah, they were really helpful um, and everything. So really friendly, really polite, really helpful, really good service. Um, but they gave us info on something called, I think they're called the Parliamentary Ombudsman, something like that, really strange, strange name, tricky to pronouncing, um, but what they are is, they're run by the government, obviously, parliamentary, and they regulate or keep an eye on what the NHS are doing, um, and they're the ones that will prosecute any NHS people or whatever that are breaking laws, I suppose. I think that's what they do anyway, from what they explained, what they are and what they do on the phone. That's what I got from it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're going to look into it. Um, and they also gave us some more information on other people to call uh, and they gave us information on the Health Watch UK I think they were called um, and what they do is they do a advocacy service which is where they'll send someone out to help you deal with the complaint and deal with the problems with the doctor's surgery on your behalf and they will sit down with you and your doctor's surgery to talk with them about how they can better help you, how they can rectify the situation and how they can make improvements to their service, to the GP service. Um, so I guess they kind of, the health watch kind of acts like a sort of go-between in a way, but they're acting on your behalf, um, which is really good because it would be really good to have someone who knows what they're doing on my side that can help me because not being funny, I'm not, I get confused quite easy because of my learning difficulties. I do get confused and there are certain things that I struggle to understand and you know and um, the doctor's surgery the receptionists up there know this they know I have learning difficulties they know I'm easily confused so they use that to their advantage you know, they'll speak down to me, they'll speak to me like I'm a baby, they'll speak to me like I'm dumb, like I can't understand them, sort of very condescending and patronising and annoying, basically, um, you know, and... I struggle with that because it upsets me, you know? Yes, I might be mentally disabled, but 
that doesn't mean I'm any less than anyone else. That doesn't mean I'm stupid. You know, yeah, okay, sometimes you might have to slow things down a little for me so I can keep up with what you're saying. I may have to ask extra questions and double ask questions just to double check that I am understanding correctly and that I am hearing correctly. But I'm not stupid, you know. And it really upsets me when someone talks to me like I am. And it, at that point, it, I kind of get a, a little bit emotional. And to be honest, I don't know whether to walk away crying or get angry and scream in the person's face. You know, and when that feeling comes on, it gets overwhelming for me. So at that point, I just think, no, I've got to walk away now. I've got to walk away from this situation to protect myself, to protect my own mental health. I have to walk away from the situation. So I can't deal with that situation then. You know, so. And they know this. So they'll deliberately, when they've made a fuck up, and I go, right, excuse me, there's a problem here. I think, you know, you've missed out this med, you've done this, you've done that. They will then treat me like that. They will start talking really fast, uh, adding loads of different numbers. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, you know, and when someone's shouting loads of different numbers, times, dates you know, different names of different medications, and they're shouting it at you really fast, you know, in a really condescending way, it's just like, ugh. And when you have something like sensory processing issues, and you have, and you're stood in a doctor's office where there is a lot of noise going on around you as well, it is really hard to focus. You know, and then they'll do the thing, sometimes they'll do the thing where they'll whisper. And I can't hear them because the background noise, you know, the little kids running around playing whilst they're waiting to see the doctor. The the elderly people sat there sneezing and coughing. Um, you know, the mums chattering with each other. You know, the teenagers sat there beeping with their games on their phone. You know, all the noise going on in the background is louder than the receptionist when she's whispering at me, you know? And it's just like, when I say, oh, I can't hear you, can you speak up? They get funny with me, they're like, oh, you know? And then they'll get short with me and start getting snappy with me. And I just think, no, um, don't get snappy with me. I'm not getting snappy with you. I've politely asked you to speak up because I cannot hear you. This is inf important information that you're trying to give me about my health care. I need to hear this. So could you speak up? You know, and they don't like it when you tell them that they're doing something wrong. And then what they do if I make a complaint it's like they punish me for complaining so they'll do something like mess up my prescription again because I've complained or or they'll go on the system and cancel my appointment without without consulting me so then when I turn up for my appointment and sign in it comes up saying, oh, you don't have an appointment today. So I go to the desk and say, oh, I've had an appointment today. But the self-check-in says I don't. So they check the system and they go, no, you don't have an appointment today. It was cancelled. And I say, well, I didn't cancel it. Who did? And then they're like, oh, well, it wasn't us. You must have rung up and cancelled it. Maybe you forgot. No, I didn't forget. I made this appointment like three days ago. You know, I, I don't forget this stuff because 
when I'm at the surgery making the appointment, I make sure I put it in the calendar in my phone and I will put several reminders to remind me the day before and on the day that I have the appointment to remind me, oh, you have an appointment tomorrow. Get up the next day. You have an appointment in three hours. You have an appointment in an hour. You know, because I know I'm forgetful, I put this stuff in my phone to remind me. So I know that I don't forget. Also, my calendar is linked. My Google calendar is linked to my partner's Google calendar. So any appointment I put in my calendar comes up on his devices as well and reminds him as well. So if I forget, if I don't have my phone and I forget, my partner sees it on his calendar and he'll remind me. You know, so I do not forget my medical appointments. So, and as a backup, we also write them on our wall calendar as well. So that if our phones like, I don't know, if there's some sort of accident or something that wipes out all technology on the earth, I'm still going to know I have an appointment today, you know. Um, but so I know I don't forget these appointments. So I know it is them deleting them deliberately to get at me because I made a complaint about them. You know, and that is not on. That is disgusting. They shouldn't be treating people like that. If they don't want people to complain about them, then they should stop being knobheads. Not being funny, excuse my language, but it's the way it is, you know. If you don't want to be complained about, make your service better. You know, don't treat people like they're a bit of crap, you know. But, so, sorry, I've just got to calm myself down. I'm getting a little bit too excited. I'm getting really red again because my blood pressure is going up. See, I get really red all around here and it goes all red and blotchy when my blood pressure goes up. It's like a physical reaction as well as a actual internal reaction. Really weird. But yeah, so but yeah, the three organisations we rang today were really helpful, as I said. Really good. And to be honest, I think the only problem with them is the fact that they're not advertised enough because I struggled to find out about these I mean I'd heard about the CQC because some people I know told me about them so I looked up their website and someone I know shared I think it was one of my cousins actually I think it was they shared their link to me on Facebook so I looked them up I found them but it was only through when I ranked CQC that I found out about these other organizations that can help that's the only reason I found out about them I've never seen any leaflets about it at my doctor's office never you know so what chance have people got to make form formal complaints if they don't know who to go and complain to, you know, especially people that have learning difficulties, you know, because I know a few people, I have a few friends, um, their learning difficulties are a lot worse than mine and they struggle a lot more with it and they struggle a lot more to understand this type of thing than I do. So I just think people like that, what do they do when they're being treated this way? They're not going to know who to go to unless they are given the information. And, and the people that are treating them badly aren't exactly going to give them 
ammunition, are they? They're not going to give them the info to make a complaint about them. So I think that's the only downside to these these organisations is the fact that they're not they're not advertised enough. So what I'm going to do is do my best to advertise them a little bit on my YouTube. I will post the links or as many links for them as I can below this video. Um, I will also be posting links on the Chronically Suki Facebook page. So if you need them, go there and you should be able to find them. Um, I'll try pinning them to the top of the Facebook page as well. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I'll give it a go. Um, but yeah, so if you are someone who is having issues with a medical professional, such as a GP, uh, hospital doctors, care workers or care home workers, nurses, anything like that, dentist, anything like that, and they can be, it doesn't matter whether they're private or NHS. You know, if you're having problems with any of those, do use the links that I'm going to post. Do make complaints. The more complaints that are made, the better, you know. Um, and also do go to Healthwatch and get an advocate from them because they are very, very, very helpful. The lady we spoke today to today on the phone, she was amazing. Uh, when we told her that we had learning difficulties and we get confused easy and we struggle with this kind of thing, she was like, right, okay, that's that's fine. And she did her best to explain it all in an easy to understand way for us. Um, and that, you know, she was very, very helpful. So, but she wasn't condescending. She didn't speak down to us. She didn't speak to us like we were children. She spoke to us like we were adults, but used slightly easier to understand language rather than all the jargon, you know? She explained it clearly for us. So that was brilliant. So do go to them and get an advocate as well if you need an advocate to help you with complaints against uh, medical staff. Um, so yeah, and I will post their link as well. And that, so yeah, that's what I've been doing today, really. That and trying to relax and that. You have to excuse me, I'm feeling a little bit dizzy at the moment. <sighs> Having a heart condition is well annoying. I can't get excited much about anything really, especially when I haven't got my medication. Because if I get overexcited about anything, I get dizzy, nauseous, start to feel faint, start to get chest pains. <laughs> Ugh. But yeah, I should be fine. Um, so yeah, you might notice I've got my wrist splint or my wrist support on the other hand today. The other day I had it on this one because the other day I dislocated this wrist and this thumb uh, whilst opening a can of Pringles. Yeah. <laughs> um, so and this one, I'm not really sure how I did this one, 
I woke up this morning uh, and obviously I was zombified because I hadn't had much sleep last night because pain somnia um, but so I was zombified come in made a cup of tea went and sat down picked up the TV remote and there was a pain in my wrist Look, looked at my wrist and it was out of joint so I just kind of put it back in joint and I was like how the hell did I do that so I don't know whether it was last night I rolled over and maybe laid on it funny and because that's happened before that happens quite a bit you know regularly in the mornings I got wake up pop back in different bones Usually it's my feet every morning when I get out of bed, put my feet on the floor and put weight on them. All my bones in my feet just click back into place. Um, and occasionally I'll roll over and dislocate my wrists or my thumb or my shoulder. So, yeah. But... The only problem I'm having with it at the moment is because I can feel it. Because uh, I don't have my pain meds. So I can feel every dislocation. Whereas usually with my pain meds, I can feel it a little bit, obviously. Um, the pain meds I have ain't that great, you know. Um, but I can feel it a little, but you know I can it's more manageable without the pain meds though it's not as manageable and you know um and really painful so yeah I'm really confused now I don't know why I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what. <laughs> what have I forgot? I can't remember. I'll remember later when I don't need to remember. It's usually what happens. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's all I need to say really. I'm lost I don't know um but yeah I will post them links on the YouTube and on the chronically Suki Facebook page as I said if you do need help with any of making complaints or whatever do go to Health Watch UK and get an advocate from them um I'm due to see an advocate in the next few days and uh, hopefully they're going to come out and help me with it all and hopefully soon I'll have my medication back. Hopefully I'll get it before I actually collapse and die. But <laughs> I don't think I'm going to collapse and die. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to stop gabbing on now because I'm just confusing myself even more for some reason. I don't know why I'm... Why am I so confused? Why am I, I feel like I'm forgetting something. It's nothing to do with the video though. Nothing to do with all this GP stuff. It's something else. But I can't remember what. I'm not cooking anything, I don't think. No, I'm not cooking anything. So I just had something to eat earlier. Oh God, I don't know. I'll, I'll remember later <laughs> when I don't need to. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. See you all later. Bye bye.